First at four, it looks like it's Biden versus Trump. Senator Bernie Sanders tells us why he's suspending his presidential campaign, but he is not quite finished yet. Also, an interesting conversation about upcoming elections in Michigan following a pandemic. What these clerks are telling us right now, that's part of our coronavirus coverage. Plus, the timeline when those stimulus payments are going to start showing up in your bank accounts. Who gets paid first? Hey, Ben. Karen, I hope you soaked in the sunshine in those 70s today because we are in for a case of weather whiplash tomorrow. We'll look at all the numbers right now. First at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, Senator Bernie Sanders has officially suspended his campaign for the White House. That makes former Vice President Joe Biden the presumptive Democratic nominee, the candidate to take on President Trump in November. Kimberly Gill in the newsroom with reaction from all the key players. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Senator Sanders was the front runner early on, but it struggled since Biden turned things around on Super Tuesday, then racked up more key wins, including here in the state of Michigan. Uh, Sanders says he cannot see a path to victory, but he wants a voice in the Democratic Party. While Vice President Biden will be the nominee, we must continue working to assemble as many delegates as possible at the Democratic Convention, where we will be able to exert significant influence over the party platform and other functions. Then together, standing united, we will go forward to defeat Donald Trump, the most dangerous president in modern American history. And Biden released a statement reaching out to Sanders supporters saying in part, quote, I see you, I hear you, and I understand the urgency of what it is we have to get done in this country. I hope you will join us. You are more than welcome, end quote. Now, meanwhile, President Trump is somewhat stirring the pot on Twitter, tweeting questions such as why isn't Bernie giving up all his delegates and wondering if progressives like Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez will now support Biden. Karen. We still have a long way to go until November, but at the same time, it'll be here before you know it. We'll keep you posted on this and any other developments. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right, a big political day. Thank you, Kim. Now, let's shift our focus to the coronavirus crisis right here in Michigan. In the past hour, we just learned the death toll in our state has pushed over 20 thousand. The numbers, the number of deaths has increased by more than 100 since yesterday. 959 families now grieving for lost loved ones. Starting today, all smart bus routes have been suspended, replaced with reservation shuttles. You can find more information on the smart website. Also, DDOT buses are providing masks for passengers. And Mayor Duggan has a warning for anyone who is using public transportation for anything less than essential reasons. It is not legal under the governor's order for you to be on the bus if you are not providing one of the essential services that the governor outlined, you're working at an essential job, you're taking care of a family member, etc. The mayor went on to say he is working with transit police to allow drivers to flag passengers who are not riding for legitimate reasons, and some passengers may be questioned. General Motors has its marching orders to build ventilators. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services awarded GM a contract today to build 30,000 ventilators by August. The government says the $500 million contract is the first deal to build ventilators announced under the Defense Production Act. GM will be making the ventilators at its Kokomo, Indiana facility. We do know that everybody has questions concerning the coronavirus, and our Dr. Frank McGeorge is working diligently to provide answers to those questions. He's joining us to address two issues that a lot of viewers have asked about. Doc? A common question being asked is, if someone who is infected walks down a store aisle, how long is it before it's safe to walk where they were? Well, first of all, hopefully everyone is wearing masks. So if they are infected, even before showing symptoms, they emit as little virus as possible into the air around them. But second, the answer depends somewhat on ventilation. In larger, well-ventilated spaces, any virus that might hang in the air is dispersed in seconds. But if the air is still and stagnant, fine aerosols can linger for much longer. As an example, think of when someone may have belched or passed gas near you. In poorly ventilated spaces, that smell lingers. Well, that smell is essentially from tiny particles left in the air.
Now, notably, many stores have tried to at least partially address this by creating one-way aisles to reduce the bottlenecks from people passing in different directions. Now, here's another common question. Do people with diabetes and high blood pressure get infected more easily? Well, the answer is no. They are not at a higher risk of becoming infected. The SARS-CoV-2 virus can infect everyone equally. However, it does not cause the same problems in everyone equally. Specifically, people with health issues like diabetes, high blood pressure, lung, and kidney problems are more likely to develop severe complications and sadly, also more likely to die. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Doc. We want to clarify some of those numbers that we share with you at the top of the hour. Uh, I did misspeak, misspeak, misspeak. In our state, that has pushed to the number of 20,000 cases of coronavirus. And as of today, we have 959 families now grieving for lost ones. Many of you are calling us and you want to know when are those stimulus payments coming today? We do have a timeline from Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. She says the first 60 million payments should go out mid-April, probably the week of April 13th. That first wave will be for people who use direct deposit for their 2018 or their 2019 tax returns. Now, that second wave will go out 10 days later to Social Security beneficiaries who did not need to file taxes, but who received Social Security payments via direct deposit. Around May 4th, the IRS should start mailing paper checks to those other individuals, starting with people who have the lowest income first. Many of you may have seen video like this yesterday, people lining up to vote over in Wisconsin in the middle of a national health crisis. There was a court battle over in-person voting, but the courts ruled the primary should go on. Now you might wonder what kind of plans are in place here in Michigan with two elections looming. Local 4's Paula Tutman put together a panel of experts and got some answers for us. On the video conference call, Macomb County Clerk Fred Miller, Oakland County Clerk Lisa Brown, representing Wayne County Clerk Kathy Garrett, whose brother unfortunately passed away, Lisa Williams Jackson, Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey, Rochester Hills Clerk Tina Barton, Roseville Clerk Richard Steenland, Sterling Heights Clerk Melanie Riska. Already, your local and county clerks are putting together COVID contingency plans. We stand ready to make certain that the election process is not compromised and uh, that democracy will prevail. Each clerk had the same reaction when they saw the video of those long lines in Wisconsin yesterday. Frightening. It's frightening to see, uh, first of all, people shouldn't have to wait that long to vote. If we were to have um, precincts open, we've already looked at um, you know, sneeze guards to put in place, um, acrylic um, guards that we could put in place at the precinct if we had to that would protect the precinct workers, the gloves, the hand sanitizers, the, the masks. Paramount that Lansing act now, not later in giving clerks the tools they need to reach voters and to efficiently count the vote. I think it is imperative for our legislature to revisit the notion of allowing us to process um, or at least open AV ballots early. The biggest joint problem, a bipartisan agreement that disinformation and misinformation campaigns to dampen trust in the process be stopped. That every single application that comes in for an absentee ballot, uh, uh, we're checking the signature on the application. And when that ballot is returned to us, we're checking that signature a second time. We're not reinventing the wheel. We have states, we have city, big cities that do vote by mail. And all we have to do is look what they're doing. I think that one principle that we absolutely cannot let go of is adherence to a paper ballot, whether it be voting at the polls or voting absentee. We must maintain that paper ballot. Our recent primary with same-day voter registration and a focus on absentee ballots was an unwitting dress rehearsal, as Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson indicated in an earlier interview. We are really one of the only states in the country where voters demanded the right to vote by mail. We will administer a safe election. It's important to us that uh, our voters are not afraid to vote, that they don't feel that they are will be jeopardizing their health in order to vote. Obviously, I think that we need to go, you know, communication, get people to realize the, the benefit and the, you know, the, the ability to vote absentee and, and minimize the personal contact. 
Wow, big thanks to all of those clerks who joined me this morning. Really a worthwhile conversation. We're going to post the whole thing. It's about 35 minutes on our social media platforms and click on Detroit.com. Important information for your district, Karen. All right, a very important conversation. Thank you so much, Paula. Right now, we are enjoying a break from that rain that might have kept you up last night. You might want to savor this evening because, Ben, rain could be making a comeback, I understand. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, Karen, it is going to be a huge change, almost flashes of winter as we get into tomorrow. But we are a far cry from that today. This may turn out to be our warmest day of the year so far. We've tied yesterday 71 and we did it with a good deal of sunshine. You can see those current numbers that are out there right now. Some 60s up there in the north zone, but Metro Airport, Adrian, all seeing 70 degrees right now. And we're doing it again with a lot of sunshine. Winds are noticeable, but not nearly as bad as they're going to be tomorrow. Here's tonight's forecast. We'll be sinking into the 50s and we will be seeing rain returning mostly as we get late tonight. So more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, Pope Francis is floating a new theory about the coronavirus, what he is saying about the cause. Also a big celebration connected to the virus, the story behind this light show, but not everything is back to normal for residents in this city. Later, new evidence some of your favorite restaurants and their employees are really hurting while one chain is trying something new during this crisis. Stay with us. And remember, you can help local restaurants by donating to our Food for Frontline campaign. We'll use that money to buy lunches for healthcare workers on the front lines. It's a win-win for local businesses and local health heroes. Go to the ForTheFrontline.ClickOnDetroit.com to get involved. We'll be right back.